Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today I want to do a video about a technique for creating interesting distorted bass sounds with two tools, Alpes filtering and distortion. Now, distortion, you probably know what it is. However, Alpes filtering, not everyone knows what that is. And I'm going to tell you specifically what it does in the end of this video, because I want to hook you up. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you that, like, Alpes filters play on the artifacts rather than on the other things that normal filters do. Let's leave it at that, and I'm gonna unwrap the secret later. So let's make a sound, shall we? All right, so here is my ardor session. I'm going to add a MIDI track using Zenit sub effects. I'm gonna call this Zin, and I'm going to connect my MIDI keyboard and enable record so I can play. All right, so for this to work, we need a harmonically rich sound. So I'm going to open up the Sub Effects interface and change the basic waveform to a saw wave. At first, it looks like a triangle, but if you move this all the way to the left, it's a saw wave. One thing, we are missing some high frequency content because by default, the filter is kind of a bit closed. That's the difference. And now we can also disable velocity sensing so playing gentle notes won't turn down the filter. If I leave this You can see not playing at full velocity makes it dimmer. Anyway, that's not important. Okay, we have our saw. Let's now add an Alpes filter. Now, there's only one plugin that actually does this uh, on Linux, and it's called 4x4 Paul Alpes. I believe it's by Steve Harris. Yes, it is by Steve Harris. So now if I play, Nothing changed, right? Something changes when I'm moving the faders, but... It still sounds exactly the same, right? All right, so now... Uh, let's leave it at that. I'm going to add distortion. And I want to use a Wolf Shaper plugin so-called Wolf Shaper. This is a plugin that is under development currently and I've been conducted by the developer. Yeah, by Patrick Desolnier. So, this plugin is a distortion uh, that allows you to create your own function so we can make... I'm gonna reduce the post gain and increase the pre gain. So you can hear we are driving the waveform deeper into uh, our function. However, it's still pretty quiet, so I'm going to do something. I'm going to turn down the whole track, and I'm going to turn up Zenit Sub FX's voice. Yeah, we can hear now much more distortion, you can see. Oh. Okay, now our peak peak indicator is right at the top, so we are actually saturating the whole function, which is cool, because now we can right-click to add some weird things. You can also play with some warping functions. Let's play a lower note. I think I will actually... Oh, I can just transpose my keyboard. All right, so we have a saw wave. We have it filtered with an Alpes filter and distorted, but what happens when I disable the Alpes filter? Did 
doesn't sound the same, right? Let's keep this one on top. <laughs> so now I'm going to enable our all opus filter. I'm going to maybe reset this to a simple, very, very simple distortion function. So you see, it sounds very different. Well, let's open up the Alpus filter. Let's make it keep on top, stay on top too. And now I'm going to play around with these faders. Well, that sounds really cool. But w what is happening? Why? Why doesn't it? I disable distortion I do the same thing nothing really happens instead apart from when I move the fader so what is going on well here's the secret of how an Alpus filter is doing its thing or what it is doing let's drop in another plugin and that is going to be simple simple scope no, and I, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, give me mono. All righty, here is a fantastic oscilloscope plugin. Uh, let's make it stay on top so it doesn't disappear. And now let's disable our Wolf Shaper and Alpus filter. What we have is, of course, a sawtooth wave. I'm going to give this a trigger. So it's going nice and sweet. Right now, if I enable the Alpus filter, we can see it sounds the same, but it looks completely different. The key to understand this is the phase of frequencies in relation to their amplitude. So this waveform you can see right now here has the same frequency content in amplitude as a regular sawtooth wave. That is why it sounds exactly the same, because it has all the harmonics that a sawtooth wave has and in the same amounts. What is different is that the harmonics are delayed slightly in relation to each other, which makes them build up in a different way, creating this waveform. So let's reset the Alpus filter. By default, it does something which is not very, not making too much difference, right? Let's zoom in a little. We have just a little thing here. You can see that actually what it does is it shifts the energy that is being originally on this waveform on the top here in this sharp corner and it transfers that energy here lower. So this is high frequency energy. It was like shifted in time so that it is in a different place on the waveform. What if I move all of them up? It's kind of reduced. And at some times, we can create something that doesn't really sound. It sounds kind of uh, a bit different. And I think it's because this. Uh, Alpus filter has four poles, and each pole can be tuned to a different frequency. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not super savvy with the electronic side of things. Uh, so this filter has four sections. Each one has a frequency and a feedback amount. I'm not touching the feedback, because I don't want to em emphasize any frequency bands, but I could. <laughs> If I wasn't on bypass. So 
So another useful thing is using the feedback to actually change the frequency content. But that can easily create some uh, very harsh sounds. So I'm going to reset this to zero. So if I play around with the faders, I'm actually changing the placement of the pulse on the frequency spectrum. So we can go from zero hertz, or actually from one hertz, to three kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 15, and so on. So the most motion happens actually here because the scale is not logarithmic. If it was logarithmic, we would have more resolution and low frequencies. It sounds almost exactly the same until we distort it. You can see this is our distortion clamping on the waveform. This is what happens when we play around with the Alpes filter when the distortion is happening. The frequency content is the same in, in coming into distortion, but the phase is different so the shape of the waveform is different, and distortion operates on the shape of the waveform, not on the frequency content. So it cuts off, it clips the waveform, and because the waveform is distorted even so it sounded the same, the result of the distortion is different. And you can automate this stuff. Let's make a bass line, right? I'm gonna call this bass. I'm gonna close all these for now and I'm gonna make a bass. A riff. I think it's too fast. Let's change the tempo to 90 BPM. Could be! Let's now uh, maybe right click on this thingy and transpose it one octave down. We don't actually want a whole bunch of very complicated melodies here. We just want something simple to showcase what we can do with automation of this. So I'm going to add an automation lane for the frequency of the first pole. And I am going to change it to play mode so the automation is being played out. Now I'm going to draw some ramps. So our distortion could be more harsh. Uh, we could make this harder. Let's insert a new point. Ah, oh, yeah, much more crunchy. Let's take a look at our scope now. I'm going to make it smaller so it doesn't obscure the view. I'm going to Okay, if I disable the automation, uh, it's way more boring. If I disable Alpha's filter altogether, it's just a square wave, really. And if you distort any periodic waveform extremely high, what you get is usually kind of something like a square wave. Uh, if it's a simple waveform like a sine wave, a triangle wave, or a sawtooth wave, you can see that it kind of stays a little bit sawtoothy here, but not really. However, the Alpes filter makes it all different. And if we make it move, now this is just one pole. We could automate more of these. So let's go and add frequency of the second pole. And let's make this one move in maybe higher frequencies a bit. And maybe softer. Uh, faster, I meant. <laughs> softer? Uh, oh, that's gonna be weird. You see, going into too low 
frequencies makes it sound a little bit wonky. Okay, let's disable automation of this first poll and listen to what this motion does. Not much. I reckon it's a bit too high. Yeah, I think it's a bit too high in the frequency range and it affects only harmonics that are very minute in amplitude. So they don't affect the shape of the waveform that much. So they don't and um, they don't affect the output of the distortion that much. So if I move this to lower frequencies, it has much more effect. Well, that's of course exaggerated and a bit not super cool, but uh, I bet it's gonna sound better if I add a kick to this. So, give me a second. Okay, we have a kick. <laughs> Much better now, huh? Alrighty, uh, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something. This uh, Ardor project will be available for download, so you can go to the description and there is a link. You can download this session and play around with it. I highly encourage you to check out Ardor and Zenit SubFX or Zenfusion if you haven't. The, this is all open source software. Thank you for watching. <laughs> um, if you have any questions uh, for this or the open source software for music production in general, please leave them in the comments. If you have any suggestions for future videos, which is sometimes the same thing as the questions, also please leave them in the comments. I want to say big thanks to all the Patreon supporters who are helping me have more time to dedicate to making videos and less time to do other work. I will see you in the next video. Bye!